I'd say we held Ooh. off long enough. Game of the week here. SEC mm. on CBS. Arkansas versus Texas A&M. The Aggies favored by four and a half. 3.30 Central. Or excuse me, 3.30 Eastern. 2.30 Central, of course, on CBS. Over under of 47 points. Who do you like in this matchup? 47 points. Man, they're thinking a, kind of a low-scoring game, huh? Yeah. I just – I, you know, this is – the theme. The theme of week four, Mike, is we're going to have some tight games, man. Yeah. And we're going to have – we're going to have two of the best programs play in prime time. CBS, no game of the week, no SEC network, don't need none of that jazz. Just give me Gary Danerson and CBS – and we're going to have us a hell of a ball game. And I think this is exactly what we're going to have, man, because they match up so well. I, one thing that has concerned me with Texas A&M and their sluggish start is the way that they've been able to protect these quarterbacks. Hell, it got one of them hurt. The other one, he's finally coming into form. He's making some great plays, but he can only do so much when he's not vertical. So right. that's what worries me because Arkansas has got a hell of a defense, sneaky good defense. They can come in there. They can they can raise hell. So that's the part that scares me for the Aggies. I have been willing Texas A&M to the SEC championship <laughs> since the start of this season, Mike, mm -hmm. and it's getting harder. I mean, I about lost it in Colorado last week. Yes, did they win? Yes, but it, they were supposed to, and they still look sloppy doing it. Arkansas is playing like they, they're they going into week nine, and I think that's a huge advantage. Texas A&M seven, Arkansas is 16th. We got a five-and-a-half point spread here, Mike, and I think it comes down to the damn last second. In fact – I got game-winning field goal Ooh. of this game. 31, Texas A&M, Arkansas, 28. I had it. This is one of those, again, back and forth. I'm confused. I, I, I don't understand. Who's winning the game? <laughs> oh, did I not tell you? Texas A&M. That's it. This is how confident I am, Mike. I don't even want to tell you the teams. I'm just going to tell you what the score is going to be. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, this should be one hell of a matchup. We still don't know. Uh, Ricky Stromberg, Dalton Wagner, the offensive line for Arkansas, will they suit up? That could be paramount in this matchup. Anaya Smith, Texas A&M, a little banged up as well. Uh, it sounds like uh, Caleb Chapman, the receiver for A&M, is not going to play. So, you know, some key players on both sides of the team so are going to likely miss this game or at least be limited for the matchup. So it mm -hmm. doesn't really favor one side or the other. If you ask me on the injury front, uh, you know, these defenses, both some of the best in the SEC, I think Texas A&M might have the most underrated. Everybody loves Georgia. How could you not love Georgia's defense? But I think A&M is right there with them. Uh, while Arkansas, I think they are, uh, you know, they don't have the star power, but they, they just work as a unit. And I, I think defense is, yeah. is all about working as a unit more so than anything else. So I understand why everybody's looking at the spread and, and or the over-under, I should have said. And kind of like you, Shane, I mean, this – hell, it wouldn't surprise people if it was 10-9 to 9 or something like that. But I think it's <laughs> going to be a lot more high scoring because I got a lot more faith in uh, K.J. Jefferson and Burks and – uh, Traylon Smith and this Arkansas offense. And on the flip side, I love Texas A&M's offense outside of the offensive line, which has been struggling. I think Zach Calzada starting to come on. That's why he was one of my prize pick selections. I think he's going to have a solid game. Uh, but, man, I have gone back and forth and back and forth all week on this matchup. And I like, uh, you know, I like what you said, Shane. I think – it comes down to a field goal. I mean, this going to be that type of a <laughs> ball game. But you got the wrong side, brother. Cam <laughs> Little, he's going to kick it. The freshman for them, Arkansas Razorbacks, 27. Texas A&M, 24. The streak ends this weekend in Jerry World. And if you were to ask me, Shane, on a confidence scale from one being the least, 10 being the most... <laughs> I'm going about 
point five. Horsetown Honda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, this would not surprise me at all because I think A&M is elite. But I think you kind of hit on the key there, Shane. It's not so much I'm sitting here saying that, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, Arkansas is going to beat A&M. But which team's playing yeah. better? And I really do feel mm-hmm. like uh, the Razorbacks are, are hitting on all cylinders right now. And I think that could be the difference in a tight, tight game here in Jerry World. Uh, but, it, but again, it would not surprise me in the least if Texas A&M finds a way because they got so many mm-hmm. damn stars on this game. And a part of me wants to see them win it because I want to see <laughs> A&M and Alabama both be undefeated when they meet in a couple weeks. But I just got to give you my honest take, Shane. I think Arkansas is playing too well to get beat right now, particularly when uh, Arkansas's offensive, excuse me, A&M's offensive line has uh, just not really been getting it done up to this point. So I, I just don't know how you can. Now I wouldn't say unbelievable, but I, see, I'm I'm turning myself in, into knots here because <laughs> I think it's so tight. But it's just a slight, slight edge to the Arkansas Razorbacks. Yeah, I think it comes. I think it comes down to future head coach Elko and. Odom here. I think this is a, a who who can draw up. The, I think I think that's what it is. It's going to come down to a couple key possessions, Mike, mm-hmm. and which defense trips up the offense at the right time. I mean, the fact of the matter is, Mike, you you look at what Arkansas. Uh, Arkansas is going to be calloused at the end of this streak, <laughs> man. They got they got Georgia, they got Ole Miss, they got all these damn teams that are they are. Wait, they are playing Georgia, right? Next, Next week, week, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, there's there's no trap game here, man. Right. Arkansas is they're gonna they got to get used to this, and, and if they've shown us anything with the Texas game, they they they're ready. I get that, and it would not surprise me. Like I said, I bounced around, but I think I think if Texas A&M is truly going to make a run at the playoffs, they got to win games like this and not close, man. I, even though I gave them a three point, they mm-hmm. really got to pull away. If you if you expect them to compete with Alabama right now or potentially Florida or Georgia in the SEC championship, you know, they they cannot afford to stumble against Arkansas. And that's not a that's not a knock on Arkansas. I, I just think that when you look talent gap it's no joke here, man. A and M's got a better roster. It's just right. Arkansas's doing more with theirs, and that's all about the coaching. So, who gets them right this week? Is it Texas A and M? Is it Arkansas? It does it's a coin toss, Mike? Yeah, and a couple of X factors I think in this game: Anaya Smith for Texas A and M. If he's a uh, you know full go on special teams, that's been a disaster for Arkansas in this series. So, uh, and hell, he almost had several touchdowns last week on kick return so watch that and then last season Jalen Watermeyer the outstanding tight end I think he's the best tight end in the SEC Mm -hmm. he had his way with the Razorback so you know those guys you got to limit them if you're Arkansas so like I said I mean Texas A&M's got the pieces to win this this thing is a is a complete toss-up in my mind (laughs) 